I don't think anything is ever owned. I think that your health is rented and you have to pay the rent every day. And right. your marriage is rented and you have to work on your marriage every day. And your business is rented and everything you have is rented. I think the idea that even owning anything or anything is a finish line is wrong. Right. You don't just start a company and go, okay, I'm rich now. No, you got to work on that company every day. It's rented. You don't just get in shape and go, I'm in shape now. It's done. No, absolutely everything's the same and a relationship is, is exactly the same. And I completely agree with you. I think that the breakdown of the nuclear family and the breakdown of marriage in the West is actually one of the ills and one of the big problems with it. I am not married myself, so I'm not being completely, I don't want to come across as hypocritical, but I do think that is actually a, a fast way to a degree to solve society, a lot of problems in society. I do think though, in the current setup of society, I think the reason a lot of men are also rejecting marriage is one, because there's not many wives to find, but two, I think a lot of men find themselves very unhappy in marriage because the women have no interest at all in satisfying them, like you said, or no interest at all in, in their needs. And they end up scared of divorcing her because they're going to be bankrupt in a marriage where they don't feel respected. Kids don't listen to them and they're not the king of their own household. So what would be the attraction in getting married unless you're going to be the king of your own household? And that can be extrapolated and discussed in two different ways. One about feminine sub uh, submissiveness, but also about masculine accountability and excellence. Because I think if you're truly an excellent man, you can be the king of any household. So right. it's very interesting. It's kind of interesting how all arguments come back to almost the same base biological things. And you teach women to be good women, you teach men to be good men, and everything kind of works out after that. And if you break those two things, everything built on top of it completely degrades and breaks down. Because even all the other things we've discussed, we discussed how masculinity would have prevented a lot of the COVID crisis. We can talk about how genuine masculinity or a good nuclear family and anti-propagandist uh, dinner table can prevent a lot of this transgender insanity. There's a whole, so many things can be fixed with a man being a man and a woman being a woman. It's like the it's ultimate biology, cure. It's what yeah. I always say, and it's so natural, defining the roles in the household. So like me and my husband had to sit down and it, it just was, I had a natural proclivity to do certain things. Yeah. Men and women are different and it's beautiful. Those differences are beautiful. Absolutely. The sex, sex differences are a beautiful thing. Our, our instincts are beautiful yeah. and we need to stop shunning them in this society. I, I love being a woman. I love that my husband's a man. We shouldn't be making someone feel badly about being a woman. We should to make someone feel badly about being a man. Well, absolutely. And I, if, if I had to be pessimistic about why they're doing it, pessimistic and also very realistic, they want to cause absolute chaos and confusion because during chaos and confusion, you can implement anything. Of course, slavery. It's slavery, right? People will give up their freedom for only one thing and that's safety. Mm -hmm. So they have to inject chaos and they have to inject confusion and they want us confused at every level. At every base level, they want you confused. They want you confused about why your kid doesn't listen to you, why your marriage doesn't work, why you're broke, why they want you confused from the ground all the way up. So you're just confused. So when they come along with some sort of solution, no matter what garbage it is, you end up just adopting it because you're sick and you need a medicine. So absolutely, they attack masculinity and femininity because it works so perfectly together. And if they can break that, they can break all of society by extension. And I think they've done a pretty good job of doing exactly that. And it's amazing if you look at these ideas we discuss and how ridiculous they are and how I feel like it's a psyop to even convince me to waste my time convincing people that a man is not a woman. It's done on purpose because they have the world so confused now that they can come at us with absolute garbage and it needs a discussion. If we had the basis of masculinity and femininity in the household, how much harder would the transgender argument be to implement? Think about it. Well, she's a woman, I'm a man. No. But now they got people thinking we're all the same, it doesn't matter, gender is not real, all this craziness because of the breakdown of the basics. So this is why perhaps they see you as such a threat and they see me as such a threat and they see us as such a threat because we've just stuck to the age old adages and the age old ways that people have always been. And I do think that one of the reasons why they dislike me so much is because, yeah, I, I certainly live a teenage boy's dream, but if you want to inspire the next generation, how else are you going to do it, right? You have to have the fancy car and the big yacht and all these things. And, and by inspiring these men to stand up and think for themselves and resist the slave mind, it's doing genuine damage to their slave agenda, genuine damage to their slave agenda. And I think that that's why I especially ended up targeted. I truly believe that's what's happening.